welcome to the first episode of Am I Doing This Wrong? The podcast where two millennials explore all aspects of adulthood. My name is Morgan and I'm here with my best friend and co-host, Ryan. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Perkins. Did you say last name? I I don't know. I'm already (laughs) doing this wrong. I'm already doing this wrong whatever. Anyways, <laughs> my name is Ryan and yeah, I'm a millennial. I'm this gal's best friend and we do a lot of things together, but I think we needed to stop and think about whether or not that was always the right decision. <laughs> However, it's great given us some amazing stories um, and it's given us really good content to share and figure out what the hell the next 10 years of our life is going to look like. Um, yeah. So Absolutely. I'm excited to, <laughs> I'm excited to dive into some random conversations about things that, again, a lot of people talk about, um, but usually behind closed doors, right? Like usually not on a public platform where not only can the people that you went to high school with watch it. So can your mom. Hi, mom. I know she'll be watching this. So (laughs) I know I already had to warn my mom not to listen to um, basically the whole podcast, but (laughs) we'll see. (laughs) Yeah. If you could just watch like the trailer, that'd be great. (laughs) Support me from afar. I would really, really love that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Sign up for our Patreon eventually, but you know, don't like watch it. Don't watch it. Don't listen, please, (laughs) for your own safety for your own uh, (laughs) peace of mind (laughs) right yeah exactly whatever idea of me that you have right now mom keep that savor that hold on to that (laughs) right absolutely don't taint that don't listen to our podcast (laughs) but everyone else please listen to our podcast right yeah but everyone else (laughs) please subscribe (laughs) yeah Awesome. Well, let's get into it. First things All first, right. we have to warn you guys, we are not experts. If you didn't get that from the title, then maybe we weren't as clear as we thought we were. <laughs> but we just want to let you know, we are not experts. We are not doctors or any kind of authority on most of the topics we're going to cover. So please keep that in mind. We are just two friends trying to figure out how life works, you know, getting through most of our 20s and realizing that there is no map for this. There are no guidelines and we are just doing it. Yep. There's just a landing strip and you can choose that with your wax person. If you want that landing strip, Absolutely. it's fine, but there's no map to get there <laughs> <laughs> and it leads to no man's land. Um, anyway. <laughs> well, that's a great segue. Ryan, because I have a question for you. How's your bush looking right now? My bush (laughs) is actually looking very tame, Um, but not because of me. So we're about to get just real open. Uh, (laughs) Literally, my legs are open. Literally, yeah, as the waxer would say. Continue. (laughs) So it's actually pretty tame. Now, if you would have asked me this like a week and a half ago before I went on like a short vacation to New York City, it would have been a very different situation, um, which is our fault for doing this wrong and recording too late. But it's very tame right now. (laughs) Uh, My partner actually prefers it to be a little bit more tame, but not for the reasons of like, you need to like, you know, subscribe to like this beauty standard, right? It's literally just like, I need to be able to find your vagina if you want to have sex with me. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's, right. that's fair. <laughs> You're like, let's do it already. He's like, I'm trying. It's like a rainforest <laughs> down here. I'm looking, I'm looking, but no, I understand. And that's, that's a great point. I mean, you have a partner, so there is someone to think of when you are thinking of your upkeep, your grooming habits, which I guess we all are in a sense, but you have a specific person with preferences that you talk to about it. So. Exactly. And the reason why that was like a conversation, not only because obviously like we're comfortable with each other and we want to, you know, be intimate often. Right. And so like, we're going to talk about like our preferences, not only just, sexually, but also like what that looks like getting to the sexual part. Right. Mm. Um, But I think it's really interesting because when 
<laughs> before we went on vacation, we've been like really busy. So we haven't been as sexually active with each other. But when we like planned to go to New York City, he was like, uh, like, are you going to like shave? Are you going to like get anything down there together? And I was like, I mean, I wasn't planning on it. Like nobody on the Amtrak train is going to like be worried about my bush. Like, what is the deal? Well, he, he was will, like, obviously. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he prefaced it. He was like, oh, got to, okay, got to pack. We need toothbrushes. You know, we need what? Our IDs. We need our train tickets. Ryan's got to shave her bush. Like <laughs> we have a plan. We have a checklist yeah. for this trip. <laughs> okay. Well, that being said, do you have preferences for him? So I thought I didn't mm-hmm. until I was going down on him and I was like, this is messy. Like, this is a lot more involved. I don't know. Maybe I've been a little bit too, like, (laughs) drunk and inebriated before I had, like, a partner that I actually cared about, like, their grooming habits. But, yeah, I do now. I don't don't think that it needs to be bald all the time. I'm also just not used to, like, seeing a penis, like, on the regular. I realize that, like, living with, like, my partner now. I'm not used to, like, seeing that on the regular. So now, like, when it does grow a little bit, I'm like, oh, got some inches on that hair down there now, don't you? But <laughs> You're just a lot more attentive. It's like a foreign I, I am. object in your house. Yeah. And you're like, oh, what is that thing doing? Look exactly. It it's like today. I'm going, yeah, I'm, like, going into a museum every day. I'm like, hmm, interesting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's, what's grown there? That's, right. that's really interesting. That's the close. <laughs> yeah that's the closest thing I'll ever get to like owning a plant you know like I'll never actually <laughs> own like a plant that I'll be able to keep alive that one like does the work by itself you know like it grows you know the hair comes back right. if I don't feed it for a few days like it'll figure it out you know what yeah. I mean like <laughs> more self-sufficient than that Thank it God. is a lot more like, self-sufficient all my die but my partner's <laughs> you know downstairs hair is looking you know tip-top Looking tip so. top. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so I think I have a little bit of preference as far as yeah. just like keeping it pretty short, I'd say, like maybe around like the one inch, one inch and a half, somewhere around there. Um, only because yeah, like utility wise, like if I'm going to be down there, like I can't be getting, you know, like stuff wrapped around like the dingly thing in my throat, just like, you know, Cardi B <laughs> says in her song. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was listening to that song today. I love it. <laughs> So I do bad. love that song. You <laughs> can't you get enough. Bad bitch. Like, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That wet ass pussy. You can't get yeah. enough of it. You know, I can't. it's real I wet. Can't. Uh, <laughs> but the thing about her line in that song about touching the dangly thing in the back of her throat, mm-hmm. if there is hair involved, that's like the, uh, the opposite of what I want when I go down there. Like, I feel like that's, it's gonna that's get not going to help in the anyone. back of your throat for the rest of the day. You know, yeah. that irritating, like, oh, and this <laughs> reminds me of this story from high school. I was in this journalism class and there were these seniors in there. So they're talking about their boyfriends going down and all this stuff. And we're all, you know, a little freshmen just listening like, oh, my God, these girls are wild. And so the one girl tells this story about going down on her boyfriend and she's like, and then I came back up and smiled at him and there was the hair stuck between my teeth. And I was like, oh, so I just always think of that. I'm like, check your teeth before you smile back. Like, you know, just give a good feel. Ah, uh, that's a good check. story. Like we're used <laughs> to getting like salad stuck in our teeth, right? Like, right. you know, nobody ever prepares us to get like pubic hairs right. stuck in our teeth. It's awkward <laughs> enough telling someone they have like some broccoli in there. What do you say when you see like a curly little hair sticking out between, you know, my cuspid? Still figuring it out. That's a question for the audience. <laughs> what That's do you do when question. you come up? <laughs> <laughs> when you come up, absolutely. Please let us know. Yeah. That's it's just like it's just like being underwater, you know? It's so foreign. There's so many <laughs> things going on. You know, your hands are getting wrinkly. Like, it's just this whole thing <laughs> that nobody ever talks about. They're like, oh, yeah, you'll just, like, have intercourse, and you'll, like, have sex, and everything will just be, like, awesome. You'll have, like, Sade playing in the background or something, and it's like... <laughs> No, actually. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or Cardi B's WAP. Exactly. It just depends exactly. on what kind of night it is. So That's true. That's very know. true. You and don't ever know. Speaking of, I mean, this topic really came about as a single woman, one in quarantine, but just trying to live my best groomed downstairs life. Body hair in general is what we're going to talk about. I just wanted to know what are other people doing? You mm-hmm. know, it's hard to know what's going on in the world 
with people's uh, pubes. <laughs> so if anyone is having that thought as much as I am, then hopefully they'll get something out of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is for a very specific group of people. <laughs> you know what? I feel like more people are curious than they are willing to admit, which is why we're talking about it today. Okay, yes. so now that you guys know a little bit, well, a lot of bit about Ryan's situation, a little bit about mine, like I said, single woman in quarantine, trying to figure it out, want to know what the people are doing out in the world with their body hair. Yes. So I found this article and this was the best article. I had so many graphs, so many charts, so many percentages of people, which was, there are some funny ones here. And so it's from Advanced Dermatology, which is a clinic in Illinois, and it's from 2018. So maybe we can see where things are now, especially with quarantine. I'm sure everyone's just walking around with like a rainforest in their sweats because nobody's left the house or they're barely <laughs> just getting back to it. And they all have razor burn because they're like, oh my God, I haven't shaved in like a year. So we'll see. <gasps> yes. <we will. laughs> so let's talk about a couple of things. Uh, first, where and how we groom. And I just picked out a couple things that I thought were interesting. So the most waxed, Rand, can you guess what you think the most waxed area of a person's body might be? I want to say the butt strip just because I will <laughs> never live that trauma of the butt strip down when she told me to like spread my ass I was just like people do this weekly like I'm sorry you're just seeing assholes weekly okay anyways I think the most um is probably armpits I would say probably armpits I I would think no that's our next one most waxed is eyebrows so <laughs> 70 percent excuse me 77 percent of women and 22 percent of men all right, so next one is most frequent. So this is one you already said, which is underarms, mm. which most people use a razor for, but of course I definitely do it in the shower every time. I'm Italian, so that hair comes in thick. You know, <laughs> my mom once told me, she's like, for someone so hairy, you actually have nice, you know, form in your eyebrows. And I was like, thank you, mom. I'm gonna go to school now, the fourth grade that I'm in. So that's really gonna <laughs> be, you know strong on my self-esteem I appreciate that so much so <laughs> the next one which I thought was really interesting most lasered area can Ooh. you think of that one I'll, I'll let you guess yeah I say legs because yeah I over I'd say like the past like maybe two or three years I feel like it wasn't as popular before that like laser treatments I don't know I've seen within the past few years um a few people within like my extended circle, I'd say like friends of friends yeah. that have gone for leg hair removal, like specifically for legs because they wear shorts so often. So most people, obviously I'm talking about like Southern California, but anyway, so I <laughs> would right. say, I would say legs. <laughs> okay. Good guess. I would probably do that because shaving your legs is just like a pain, but the most lasered area of the body is actually the back, according to this survey. With 22% of women and 78% of men. Oh, so, so it's the men. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. And to your point on laser not seeming so popular, it actually came out, laser treatment, electrolysis came out in the 70s, but, you know, it was kind of dangerous. There mm. weren't as many safety precautions around it, so it was kind of shied away from. But as there have been advancements and also advancements in um, affecting pigmentation of the skin, because it really wasn't safe for people of color, darker skin tones, and, Got you it. know, it could change the color of your skin. And so it just right. wasn't as, you know, widely popular. because <laughs> Yeah, replacing leg hair or like back hair with just like a million freckles. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like right? Is that a better, is that a better option? Like I'm hairless, but you know, I, <laughs> I look like I have skin cancer. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know if that's a better option. Right. What's the trade off here? No, when I was looking up that information, I just kept thinking of for Mean Girls and she's like, you can go shave your back now. I just kept thinking that line. It was cracking me up. 
Yeah. And then that influenced an entire generation <laughs> to go and, and get laser hair removal. Stats based on that comment. It's wild. <laughs> exactly. So, so, but the most groomed overall, and this is the, a cool, like the quote terminology they were using in this article was the front groin region. So front groin, front groin, which I get it, but it was just cracking me up. So I was like, I'm going to make sure I say that. (laughs) (laughs) So most people just use a manual razor and Mm -hmm. we're looking at 68% of women and 32% of men. Mm, Interesting. So as far, oh no, go ahead. No, no, no. I want to hear. (laughs) So influences on why grooming, you know, is popular, whatever. So 43% say it's a partner, which we talked about from Mm. the beginning. So that definitely is the top, you know, preference or top influence where that's coming from. Next one is friends. Okay. So before we get to friends, because I do want to know about that as well, because I have been peer pressured by this friend on this podcast. (laughs) I won't say her name, but (laughs) I definitely wouldn't have gotten a Brazilian. No, I'm just kidding. I probably would have still got it. That was, I think that was a agreed upon idea. Okay. That was a joint appointment. Not, not, well, that sounds like we, you know, went in together, which we did, but we weren't in the same room. (laughs) But Not by my choice. I would have loved to have you there holding my hand while my butt is waxed. That would have been great. That's... <laughs> I felt like I was there because I could hear you yelling from the waiting room. So I'm glad I went first because I wouldn't have gone after Ryan. She was just screaming up a storm in there. I was. And it was... she's not going back. I felt like less of a feminist after leaving that appointment. I was like, this is the opposite of what Susan B was fighting for. And like, this can't be, no, I'm just kidding. Anyways, um, but what I was going to say was with the, with the, um, you said the most popular reason for getting waxed is for their partner, right? Is yeah, that what you the said? biggest influence, 43% influence. said partner. Got it. Okay. So I was going to say, I wonder what that looks like, because like I said, like with my partner, it's not that, and we'll say his name later. I don't know. We'll get there. I'm not that comfortable yet. You know what I mean? (laughs) This is a new platform. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Take me out on a date first. You know what I mean? Like take me out first. Um, (laughs) But like I said, it's preference just solely based on like being able to see the region, right? Like you see how curly this hair is. Like imagine if I didn't use really good product, (laughs) that's what's going on in my pants. (laughs) So because it's so untamed down there, if I just let it grow, which I, you know, again, I don't care. I'm not, you know, examining my own vagina, which I did recently have a vagina examination. So she didn't mind that it was long. You know, she didn't care. She wasn't like a partner. She's not part of that 43%. Exactly. You know, so I just wonder if the stats are based on what they think their partner wants, because like, say, for instance, when we met and I was just like bald eagle, right? Like I was just flying free. Well, then when we get together, is the expectation the same? You know what I mean? Like, or can we be like fully human follow up? Like what's the follow up percentage? Exactly. You know? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Your partner might assume that this is just your normal upkeep. Like, Mm. oh, well, it's bald now. Maybe she's got a standing appointment at the Pretty Kitty and (laughs) she's getting it done every two weeks. It's true. It's true. I don't know. That's probably a conversation you have down the line. But yeah, your habits probably change when you get into a relationship. That's true, too. You're more comfortable, don't care as much. You, you did it because you went on a trip, right? You know, not in your normal day today. So So that's That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first influence. Okay. So what was the second? (laughs) So the next one is friends, as you pointed out and pointed at me and (laughs) said my fault, which we booked that appointment together. We went to Cabo (laughs) together. We both were going to be in swimsuits the whole time. So that was a (laughs) agreed upon appointment. I will take that. I will take that L. (laughs) I will take it. (laughs) 41% say friends are the influence. Uh, Next one is a parent. 
So maybe my mom calling me Harry in the fourth grade and doing my eyebrows. I had to beg her to <laughs> shave my legs though, because uh, it wasn't until junior high. She's like, no shaving until junior high. But <laughs> I was in the sixth grade and we were standing in line to go back into class. And this annoying boy was like, oh, Morgan and so-and-so should date. They both have really hairy legs. And I was so embarrassed. And so I went home and I begged my mom, please let me shave my legs. I just don't want to deal with this. You know, it's hard. It's tough out there. Sixth that grade. Is tough. Kids are mean. That is tough. <laughs> yes. Kids are awful. I mean, I, I was, I was one of them. I'm sure I was awful oh, I too. I was horrible. I was such an asshole. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I heard but... about your days with black eyeliner. Morgan was wearing black eyeliner in like the seventh grade. <laughs> Walking around like she was in, you know, like some like grunge band. Yeah, I've I've heard about those oh, days. Yeah. Yes. You were definitely a mean yeah, girl. Lots of plastic. <laughs> I was not a mean girl. No, you weren't. Maybe you weren't. a scary girl. That's with air quotes around it. Just Ooh, because. scary. Yeah. yeah, you were no, as scary as the Goosebumps <laughs> books. <laughs> right. I was gonna say I was wearing Paul Frank. Let's not be, you know. No, she's not scary. She just wears way too much eyeliner and doesn't know how to blend her foundation. That's what's scary. That was a scary thing about me. Oh my gosh. The first time wearing makeup, like just this side note, the first time I wore makeup. So the first time that I wore makeup and I really will never forget this. Like every time that I buy a new like makeup foundation or a new like concealer cover or color, anything that I buy, I like think to this moment because it'll be forever like burned into my memory. Anyways, (laughs) So yeah, we pull up, it's sixth grade. I think it was like towards the end of the year. So I was like feeling like excited. Uh, I like privately, also not so privately, ordered Bare Minerals makeup from like one of those commercials. Do you remember like those infomercials of Bare Minerals makeup? Yes. 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 Yeah. So I ordered them with my mom's credit card and it said you could order it on like a trial, you know, like, oh, like order it for 60 days, like, you know, no cost. However, obviously eventually they're going to charge you for the products that you (laughs) bought. So I ordered them and when they came, I was like, Oh, I don't know. Like, I don't know why these products came. It's so weird, but (laughs) can I have them? They look like they're my color. Um, Nice. Also foreshadowing because they were not my color. (laughs) Just, just to let you know. Um, But anyway, so we pull up to, yeah, my dad is dropping me off that morning and I go to get out the car, but like, you know, we are very traditional. So my dad's like, oh, give me a kiss on the cheek, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, oh, okay, but I didn't want to turn my face. I like, I think I like had like my hood up or like, uh, like my lunch box or something, like something so that I could just like, oh, okay, bye. Like, <laughs> don't look at all this. And I go to turn and like, you know, like say bye to him. And he was like, he like backed up and kind of like took like, a, like, he was like, what? He was like, what is, what is on your face? And I was like, what? Like, it's like makeup, you know? And I'm like, oh, I probably got like some weird little side bangs that I cut that summer or something. And I'm like, what? Like, it's like, it's makeup. And he was like, don't, don't do that again. (laughs) All the confidence that I could have had, like just left my body. He didn't know that all of my like sixth grader confidence was riding on this like bare minerals makeup that day. So I go to get out of the car. my life. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly, exactly. (laughs) So I go and get out the car and I go immediately, immediately to the bathroom. But in my sixth grader brain, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, yeah, this is makeup. Like, what do you, what do you expect? I don't know. This is Vogue. This is fashion. Like, I don't know what you want (laughs) from me. And so, but anyway, so like after that day, I still had the bare minerals makeup. So I would like put like a little bit on, you know, like I would still like brush it up against my cheek. Again, I still think it was a perfect color match. Like, I feel like I never found a match that good again. Some other details on influences of our grooming Mm -hmm. habits. So I thought this one was interesting. 88% of men are more influenced by porn. Mm -hmm. And 38% more influenced by a partner. Interesting. So that totally makes sense. Yeah. Mainly because like (laughs) 90, what was the percentage? Mainly because like 82% of men are idiots. Uh, 88%, yeah. Oh, 88, even higher. Yeah, yes, I was, even, I was even more so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so true. I mean, like, that's the thing. So I frequent the porn, you know, not all the time. I'm not like a, like an avid, like, let's go get some porn, you know, but I do watch it. 
And one thing, like if you just go to like any homepage of like a porn site, you like immediately see all of the stereotypes that like men like, you know what I mean? Because I, I would say, and I, I, we should probably look up like the statistics on it, but I would say that like more men are definitely more comfortable with watching porn than like your typical, like everyday stereotypical women, woman would be. Um, right. And so I feel like a lot of porn sites are geared toward obviously their main demographic, right? Like the main people that watch them Absolutely. the most. It's just like, you know, totally bare vaginas and then like dick enlargement, whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. So it's exactly. Like, you know, I want that ball vagina and I want a big dick. And that's <laughs> what they're, you know what I mean? They know their target demographic. No, so exactly. This statistic doesn't seem that far off. Right, right. So, exactly. Again, this is 2018. So maybe it's higher now because people have been in quarantine, as I said. So, you know, <laughs> porn sites are just, you know, stacking up those memberships. Yeah, the dick sizes have gotten smaller and the bushes have gotten hairier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they have to like meet us somewhere. They're like, we're no, you're not going out anywhere. So like you can take like the realistic porn. Okay. Right. It's not somebody's neighbor. It's just a couple. Yeah. They're just happy and in love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're like, ugh, boring. Porn sucks now. <laughs> 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 that's hilarious, that's hilarious. <laughs> so some other demographics so discussing with a romantic partner mm-hmm. so 66 percent said yes they do as we talked about we said partner is the biggest influence mm. and millennials are actually 28 percent more likely to discuss so good job millennials trying to make things not so weird and stuffy and prudish and maybe Gen Z's doing more so than us, but we're not here to talk about them. (laughs) Go to TikTok (laughs) for that. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) That's one thing too. I really do appreciate TikTok. I appreciate it because I know that I'm getting old. Like I appreciate that the... (laughs) I appreciate that social media is improving past me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like social media is not trying to impress like the average, like near 30 person. You know what I mean? They're like, you're good. We're here for the Zoomers. Or, yeah, Zoomers, right? Look, what are they called? I, I don't know. So I'm so names. old. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm so old. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> get to that on another topic. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every episode um (laughs) yeah so discussing with friends as we said so women are obviously more likely to 52 percent men are at 37 percent and then just to back up that last statistic millennials are at 55 percent interesting yeah that's super interesting so i wonder yeah i wonder if like the younger generation will be less likely not necessarily less likely to shave or I wonder I wonder what will change like if the conversations change around it what that has to influence like the interactions with dating right you know what I mean um and if you're also talking about you know like same-sex couples or non-binary folks like that hair journey is very different right because the hair that you may get from transitioning, right? Maybe like your badge of honor, right? That might be something that like really affirms your gender, right? Because right. that's something that you never had access to when the stereotypical, you know, female or woman in our society is supposed to be, yes, yeah, like an adult still with like these youngish characteristics, right? Like if all the vaginas are bare <laughs> on porn sites, then that's setting up like this expectation for when you start dating, right? Like that's like. Yes, absolutely. To your point though, you know, that's why I wanted to cover this topic because like I said, again, a single woman trying to figure it out, you know, late twenties, you know, so millennials, (laughs) young ish person, what are the people doing? You know, what are they doing downstairs? I want to know what are the expectations? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. And exactly. And what is the expectation? But that's also one thing. So I will ask you, Morgan, have you ever, and I can answer this as well. Um, mm. But have you ever gone on a hookup or, you know, or a recurring hookup or whatever? Have you ever experienced like any distaste with your amount of hair or like anything like that? Like, has that ever happened to you? 
No one has said it to me. I definitely was more conscientious of maintaining my grooming habits when I was younger. Mm. But as I got older, I'm just like, fuck it. You want to have <laughs> sex? You want to, you know, you want to do this? Then this is, you know, it's full bush tonight. Sorry. You know, it's going to happen. So mm, I haven't great. heard, you know, good or bad reviews. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just, <laughs> just they just in. looked up different porn later. They were like, you know what? That was a lot of bush. I've got to like yeah. balance it out. Right. Yeah. It's got to be shaved now. <laughs> like what? That didn't look like how I thought it was going to look. Let me reference yeah. back to my sources and see <laughs> what, you know? Yeah. So right. who knows? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'll share a story. Um, because it has happened to me, not in a way that was like, hold up, pull your pants up because that bush ain't coming near this dick. No, I'm just kidding. No, that never happened. Um, but what did happen was, oh my God, whatever. It is what it is. I was in school. I won't say if it was graduate school or bachelor's because that'll really give it away. Whatever. Okay. But I was in school and um, we were in the dorms. And it was, it was pretty dark, but like the window was open. So like you could, you could see enough. You could see a bush, okay. right? If you had to identify a bush, you could identify a bush. Right. And he identified a bush. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He identified a bush and he was like, he was like, oh, like, do you not shave? And I was like, and I, yeah. And I was like, and I literally like did one of these, like, I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> I was like, like, music stop, like, excuse me. Right. And I was like, record scratch. Right. And I was like, if I want to, I was like, sometimes why? Yes. Like what? You know? And, uh, and what did he say? Oh, he said, uh, oh, oh, he said, I don't necessarily want it bald. And I was like, well, it's really not your choice. Like, I think <laughs> I, I said something like that. And then he literally just said, trim. He was like, well, trim. You know, and so and I was just thinking, which, okay, I can appreciate the honesty. Like, I can sure. appreciate the honesty. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But the idea that, like, we're hooking up, like, first of all, you're welcome, right? Like, yeah. let's just start there, <laughs> that I even came into this fucking dorm room. Right. Like, you're welcome. Right. Um, in this, like, maybe he came to my room. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> you can sit on the bed and it's your bed. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, actually, I think that was my bed. That was like my yeah. parents' bed. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but anyways, point being, he made it very clear that trimming was the expectation. His right? preference, right. His preference, exactly. Not the expectation. But for him, he had preference. Right. Which, if it were a recurring, excuse me, recurring hookup, and... It was. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, like a few times. Whatever. I just wanted to prove to him that like you're gonna like you're gonna come back for this. And he did, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. That wasn't the third time we hooked up. That was the first time he hooked up that he said that. That's and then after say, that, okay, that's what the the question was. Like, was it the first time? Because I feel like that's not something to bring up on the first time. Like you said, like, where's the gratitude? You know? <laughs> that's all. That's all. But exactly. Probably like the fourth time, then you could start talking about what you're comfortable with, you know, what right. you, you do exactly. have preferences because yeah. now it's a thing. Okay. All right. right. Yeah, exactly. Tell me what you like. I am also pleased with you in some capacity to, you know, do this more than once. So. Well, exactly. And also too, I mean, that just kind of goes to show that like, like, like say for instance, okay. So the first time we hooked up, I didn't come. Like, I didn't have an orgasm, you know? And so, like, after that, should I be like, why didn't you make me come? Like, it's like because your bush was too big. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fair enough, right? Fair enough. Maybe he didn't have the stamina to get through the Amazon forest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. You're going into this dorm room. Like, the percentage of you really having a better time than him might be kind of low, you know? So... Yeah, he's, you know, he's definitely walking a tightrope with throwing out his preferences on the jump. This is a dorm room hookup. Like, yeah, 
why are you why are your eyes open like <laughs> shut your eyes you know turn the lights oh. off close the, yeah. <laughs> close the blinds <laughs> Yeah. Unplug your nightlight. Unplug your computer charger. Just make it <laughs> dark as possible in here. <laughs> yeah, make it a mystery to even find my bush. Not because of the hair, but because it yeah. is so I want dark. you to question if it's even me in here, you know? Like, could be. <laughs> Did I leave? Am I here? Right. Who knows? And on that note, come back next week for episode two where we talk body hair, more facts, tidbits, weird, interesting facts that the internet let me dive into <laughs> and all those and all the goodies in between. Yes. All the <laughs> <goodies>. <laughs> where we'll also discuss if we're doing it wrong. You know, mm. lots of talk of body hair. Not quite sure what the option is. Clearly we've been in most option, most situations. So what's the right one? I mean, I will say, and this kind of, you know, again, foreshadowing for this show, I will say that I've probably been doing it wrong in a little bit as far as, far as like, if a hookup took it upon themselves <laughs> <laughs> to tell me that I needed to trim, and then my now life partner is telling me, hey, um, <laughs> if we're going on like a sexy trip, you might want to like have some sexiness going on down there, then I'll say, maybe I have been doing it a little bit wrong. Um, but I just think, again, right, it depends on, yeah, single versus in a relationship, right? Like, yeah. I'm not trimming for dorm boy. Like, mm. no, you're getting the full bush, and you're going to like it. And then you're going to come back again, which you literally did twice more, right? Mm. Um, but life partner, sure. Like, I will trim no matter what, you know. I'll put a little heart down there for Valentine's Day, you know. <laughs> diet, diet red, you know, a little red heart down there. <laughs> oh, that's, I don't know. I'd have to no. read the ingredients on the dye. That is a thing. <laughs> and I'd like to know the ingredients. I, I'm, I still question, like, nair and things down there. I'm just very conscientious of what goes into my vagina, as I think most people are. I don't think that's a revelation. As I was saying it, I was like, so are every, you know, so is everyone. Mm, I mean, we'll get to that on a later. <laughs> no. <laughs> that I was not always the most knowledgeable about what was going into my oh, vagina. I'm not saying I made good choices. I'm just aware <laughs> of what's been up there. That's all I'm saying. Okay. All right. <laughs> if, if that's the standard, just as, like, I knew what was going on. I, I, I didn't always right. know if it was a good thing. I just knew what was going on. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll give you yes. that one. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, great. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks for listening in and or watching us on YouTube. If you're here yeah. watching us with our wonderful interpreters, uh, ASL access provided by pro bono ASL. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us and really just being able to and open to conversations that, like we said, we know they happen. We just want to see them happening a lot more yeah, and more on a bigger openly. platform. Right, exactly. So yeah. we'd love to hear what you guys think. Please check us out on Instagram at wrong the podcast or check out our website, wrongthepodcast.com. And mm -hmm. please subscribe and save wherever you get your podcasts and leave a five star review because we would love you so much for it. We already do. But also leave <laughs> us a review to let us know you love us back, please. <laughs> 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 yes exactly exactly so check out body hair part two coming up soon thank you guys